So the idea is uh, based on the so-called imputing effect. We will also show that in the picture. And so the observation is that for the equivalence of blood sugar level, if you give sugar by uh, orally, it will stimulate more insulin release compared to uh, intravenous uh, administration of glucose. No? So even if the blood sugar level is, is, is uh, are about the same, when you give oral or intravenous glucose, the insulin response is different. No? So that's the so-called impotent effect. And so the hormones are secreted from the gut, and this accounts for 50% of our post-prandial insulin secretion. So we need that normal response to be able to maintain a normal sugar after eating. And so that's contributed by our intuitions. And so the pr two principal, the major intuitions that are identified up to this time are your glucose-dependent insulin nootropic peptide, that's quite a mouthful, so we'll just call it GIP. And the second one is your glucose-like peptide 1, or your GLP or GLP-1. So those are the two main intuitions. So just to show us where, where they're coming from, so it's easy to remember your GLIP. We do have the letter L there. It's coming from the L cells in the distal portion of ileum and colon, and it's stimulated by the presence of food in, in the gastrointestinal uh, tract. Its receptors are found in cell membranes of pancreatic beta cells, and it is inactivated by this enzyme. We will discuss that also shortly. So the other entity, or your glucagon intestinal polypeptide, is produced proximally, you know, in the K cells of your duodenum and jejunum. It is stimulated by, also by presence of food in the gut, and similarly inactivated by your dipeptidyl peptidase enzyme. And also, its receptors are found on the cell membranes of the pancreatic beta cells. So, uh, this study has been ongoing, surprisingly, since uh, late 60s, no? And so, that's the length of time before we develop a good drug, no? So, we already know this facts by 1970s, but we have to wait for 30 years, more than 30 years, to be able to produce a uh, safe and good drug. And so, again, what are the differences between the two? Your GLIP-1 has potent inhibition of gastric emptying, so there can be effect on delaying uh, sugar rise. Also, it, it inhibits uh, glucagon secretion, and therefore it can affect reducing the food intake, and therefore uh, may, may cause loss of body weight. You know? And so, the other one has only modest effect on gastric you know, emptying, it does not inhibit your glucagon and it has no effect on satiety or body weight. But uh, uh, predominantly your GLP-1, your GLP-1, have significant effects on your beta cell growth and survival. So it can cause beta cell differentiation. So that is uh, something that we need to look at in the long term because it might be uh, an important uh, component in terms of improving our beta cell function. Of course, the uh, manufacturers, the companies that make our new drugs are not yet ready to say that they, they can prevent or delay worsening of beta cell function that, that's being looked at. So we know that the both drugs currently available have been, have been left in the market for less than two years. And so we will have to wait for this uh, significant uh, potential benefit of the newer drugs. So to uh, put that in picture, you'll see again a, a seed. It will go through our gastrointestinal tract, of course, and there will be the release of our APPs, no? So again, distally, you have the uh, GLP-1 and proximally the uh, GIP. Since they have receptors in the pancreas, it will affect the beta cells, no? As well as the, the, the alpha cells. And they, their actions are glucose dependent. You know? So they may act depending on the level of the blood sugar. So your and the beta cells will be stimulated to produce more insulin. You know? 
and your, your alpha cells, on the other hand, will be uh, stimulated to suppress glucagon production. This is the normal homeostatic state, no? And therefore, again, your glucagon, the effect is to suppress glucose production in the liver, no? Whereas your insulin, of course, is to increase utilization, both in the uh, muscle as well as in the fat, adipose tissue, no? And therefore, you will be able to have a normal blood sugar level. So that's the normal. So again, I, I have said that we will show the impotent effect. So this is what happens. So this is the blood sugar level. Uh, yellow for the uh, IV and pink for the uh, oral administration. As you can see, the blood sugar level are maintain about the same, no? Whether you keep it uh, intravenously or orally, no? They're, they try to maintain the blood sugar at level because they control them, no? So that we, we can see the basic difference. And then what they did was, as they are measuring the blood sugar, we also measured the insulin level. No? So this is for the healthy, normal subjects. This is the so-called normal intuitive effect. As you can see, uh, the intravenous glucose will cause significant insulin production. I mean the, the oral. Yellow is IV, right? So the oral causes more in, uh, insulin secretion. As you can see the big, uh, the big uh, curve, that bulk curve here. No? So that's the so-called intuitive effect. It means it increases the insulin release. So there's something in our gut, that's the lengthy piece as we have discussed, and that seems to be absent or diminished in our diabetic patient. This, this side is a diabetic patient. As you can see here, when you give the same amount of glucose, even if the blood sugar levels are the same for IV or, or oral, the diabetic patient is not able to mount that same